there is a ton of video editing apps out there. Some of them are great and some of them are not. So today I will rank all of them on a tier list from S all the way down to F. So I can finally figure out which ones are the best and which ones completely suck. And in order to give them an accurate rating, I will have them all go through the ultimate editing test. Let me explain. I prepared three raw movie clips, which I will use to edit on every platform. And yes, that means every single one of them. Once I'm done editing the clips, I will rank the app according to its functionality, results, and overall experience. So let's see which app is the best. Okay, so first up, we got After Effects, which is pretty exciting because it's the app where I got the most experience. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is by creating some movement. To do that, I'm going to use some zooms. I think zoom ins would be great on this edit. So let's set some keyframes. We're going to adjust the graphs, obviously, so it looks a bit better. Okay, that's already not that bad. But I think because we really want to put these editing apps to test, we want to add some shakes. And luckily, in After Effects, I know how it works. So let's go ahead and do that. I think our best bet is going for a Twitch shake. So let's drag it on here. Okay, this is actually going pretty good. Let's also add some S shake for a bit of movement. Very nice. Let's just put the values down a little bit. Okay, so far, this is what we got. So it's not that bad, I think. But obviously, we're going to have to add something for the quality. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my crystal clear color correction, which, by the way, you can still get for 70% cheaper via the first thing in the description. And I think this looks pretty good. Also, also, before I forget, we obviously have to add some Twixter because we're not CapCut editors. Not yet. So let's drag this here. Okay, I think a bit slower Twixter would be good on this. So let's put the speed percentage to 200. And we're going to go for a bit lower value, like 60 right here. And we're going to go to 200 again at the end. Okay, now obviously we have to adjust the graphs as well. So let's just select all of them and then kind of drag it in a way that would approximately fit the editor, okay? That looks good, bro. Let's just paste it onto the other clips. And just like this, our After Effects edit is done. I would give the whole thing a 10 out of 10. I mean, I have to admit, After Effects is just made for these kind of edits. The interface is easy to use, the outcome looks great in my opinion, and the overall experience was just 10 out of 10. Okay, I know maybe I'm a bit biased, but for me, After Effects is going straight into S tier. And with that being said, next up, we got a light motion. If you know me, then you know that I'm not a mobile editor. But for the sake of science, I downloaded a light motion. Okay, this is gonna be really interesting. So I'm now in a light motion, and I'm just gonna, I guess, click onto the plus. Okay, this seems good. Great project. Bruh. Brian paying for you. Okay, we're now on the timeline. Let's go ahead and import some footage. How do I import more footage? Okay, so now we have all the clips in line. Now it's time to start adding the effects. Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting at most. Okay, I guess we're gonna start by adding an effect. Okay, I think what we need first is some movement. This looks pretty good. I don't think I've ever done something more confusing. Okay, let's put some nice graphs. We're gonna get a speed graph that's kind of fast at the beginning. So we're gonna make it a bit exponential, just like this. I know how this works from After Effects. So at least I know something. Okay, now obviously we don't want these black bars while we make our shake. So we're gonna go ahead and add another effect, which is called tiles, I guess. Yes, perfect. Add it to your clip and we're gonna mirror the edges. This looks already way better. I always like to use a bit blur with my shake. So I guess I'm gonna do the same in a light motion. Let's see what we get. Blur. Okay, so we got box blur, directional blur, lots of different blurs. I guess we'll just go with the standard directional blur. That seems good for now. Let's increase the value a bit and we're gonna put the angle to 90 degrees. Nice. Now let's increase the strength a little bit. I'm gonna go to the beginning, set a keyframe, like an after effect as well. Then go to the end right here. Wait, where's the end? And set a keyframe for zero. Okay, let's just drag this ahead. And now we're gonna change the graph. We're gonna just make it fast again, okay? So that the direction of blur is not so long lasting. Okay, so obviously we don't have a Twixter plugin in a light motion. So I guess we're just gonna go with the normal speed of the clip. And for our zooms, we're just gonna use the normal move and transform button right here. Okay, let's set a keyframe at the beginning. And obviously we wanna keep it in unity with the other edit we made. So we're also gonna make some zoom ins. Let's go to the end. Let's increase the Z distance. I think like this around 150 should be good. Let's drag this to the end of our clip. And for the graph, we're now gonna roughly try to copy the one we did earlier, just like this. Okay, so the final result, I mean, it's made on the phone, okay? So you can give it credit for that, but I don't know, man. Let's export the edit. And we're gonna take a look at it together. Okay, I mean, besides the enormous watermark, which is a big scam, I don't think that's that bad for a phone edit. I might have done a light motion edit us some injustice. And I also really liked how fast this edit exported. It was literally like two seconds. Though I don't know about the interface. It was kind of messy and everything was all over the place. So I think considering it's a phone editing app, I'm definitely gonna put that in A tier. It's solid. It's good. It's not cap cut. So you're doing nothing wrong. If you edit on phone, it's definitely not a bad choice. Which brings us to our next contestant, Premiere Pro. Okay, so luckily I have used Premiere Pro before, so I don't think it's gonna be that hard for me. Let's start by importing our clips though. I like that this is very equal to After Effects. So let's just adjust the clips a bit. And in here, I'm gonna start with the zooms again. So let's just open this up a bit. And we're gonna put a keyframe for the scaling at the beginning. And I think we're gonna zoom in for about, let's say 115. That should do fine. Yeah, that looks good. Now we're gonna select these keyframes 
frames. Okay, let's open up the graph editor because obviously we are not CapCut editors. So we definitely want to go ahead and smoothen our graphs. Let's just bring this here, extend this a little bit. And I'm going to try again to make this graph a bit more equal to the one we had before bit more similar okay now for the shakes in premiere pro it's a bit more tricky so i just went ahead and created some transforming keyframes right here obviously we have to adjust the graphs because we don't want to look like capcut editors not yet now for the slow-mo it's very convenient because we can use just the normal twixter on here as well so let's make sure to drag this all the way above the other effects otherwise we're going to get a yellow screen and then we're going to try to roughly copy the same settings we used in after effects earlier let's put this to 200 go to the middle of the clip approximately here put it down to 60 go to the end and put it to 200 again let's adjust the graphs now now, last but not least, apply it to the other clips as well. Okay, now, so there are some flaws in our final product, which is probably me just not being good enough. But I think overall, Premiere Pro is a great program. But if you want to make these kind of edits, I would definitely consider After Effects more. So let's also put it into A tier, but in front of a light motion for sure. Okay, and I guess it's now time to get to the final boss, which is going to be CapCut. I mean, I have a bit of a history with CapCut, but let's see what it's actually got. I feel like if I log in with my Google account, they're going to disable my YouTube. Okay, so this already looks pretty easy to use. Let's just click on to New Project, select our scenes, and add them to our project okay this looks already good okay, let's just put the clips the right order okay so i guess first of all we should add the zoom in so let's just create some keyframes at the beginning and at the end okay so we're gonna go for a zoom in again like on all the other clips why is it rotating bro guess that's how you do it right like this never mind Okay, I figured it out. Now we're going to go ahead, open the graph editor. Okay, so obviously we want to do a custom graph because these look ass. I'm going to start by putting it something like this. Adding another beat, I guess. Bring it something like this, I guess. Okay, this looks not that bad. Next, we're going to add the Twix store, what CapCut people like to call it. So I guess we're going to click out to speed and select curves. We're going to obviously again go for a custom one. And we're just going to drag this one a bit down. We're going to make it equal to the one we did on After Effects. So all that is have some unity, I guess this should do fine never mind this looks ass let's edit these two let's drag this one down that way we should have something similar to the one we made on after Effects. okay this looks good and now for the shakes obviously i don't want to use the stand up ones but i think the swing top left one looks the most equal to the ones we used earlier on all the other edits so let's select this one but i'm gonna put the length of it a bit down so let's put it to like 0.4 seconds that should be fine and now to replace the s shake that we obviously don't have on CapCut, we're gonna go ahead to video effects and search for shake just select the first one and put it onto your timeline now cut it to the length of your clip click on to adjust and now we're gonna slightly adjust it i'm gonna put the intensity down to 10 and now last but not least to make up for the blur that we put on all the other edits we're gonna go ahead again to video effects and search for blur now i'm gonna use the one that's called oblique again make sure to adjust it to the length of your clip then we're gonna set a keyframe at the beginning and put the blur amount to 60 and the rotation will just leave now go to the end set another keyframe and put the blur to zero now open the graph editor i'm gonna go to custom again because obviously we don't want to use some standard cap cut graphs and i'm just gonna make it really fast something like this let's add another beat by the way i don't know what's called beat bro it's kind of weird okay this should be good now we have to go ahead and apply all these effects to the other layers as well so let's just duplicate them and drag them ahead okay let's export the edit and take a look at it okay but why do we have this logo at the end I swear I've seen this somewhere else before. Anyway, after editing on CapCut for the first time, I must say I gained a huge amount of respect for all CapCut editors for not being locked up in a mental hospital. I liked the overlay a lot. It was pretty simple to use. And there was a lot of effects that I could use from the beginning on. Though I'm not quite satisfied with the outcome, which could be my fault. And I liked the editing experience. It was actually pretty fun. But if I had to edit on phone, I would probably go for a light motion. So I have to put it into the goofy uh, B category. Now, if there was some editing applications that you use that you didn't see on this list, make sure to comment them down below. Because if we had 3,000 likes on this video, I'm gonna do a second part for a lot more editing applications watch this video if you want to learn how to edit subscribe for more assalamu alaikum and see you next time